In this lecture, we continue our discussion about how to create digital filters by introducing the Z-transform. We have previously shown that many digital filters are constructed in this form, with delay registers, scaling factors, and adders. All filters that take this form will not necessarily be useful filters. The filter coefficients, the a's and b's, can cause the y of n to grow without bound or act sporadically. To begin our discussion of digital filters, we need to discuss the z-transform. The z-transform is a complex function of complex variables that allows us to break down a signal, x of n, into an infinite number of simpler signals, much like the Laplace transform of analog signal processing. The z-transform takes the following form. Since the z-transform is a sum of an infinite set of numbers, the transform could grow to infinity. For any given sequence, x of n, the z-transform will not grow to infinity if z is sufficiently large. If z of n grows faster than x of n, then x of n times z to the negative n will shrink to zero as n grows to infinity. When x of n times z to the negative n shrinks to zero, the sequence will converge towards a constant value. Since z is a complex number, we can plot the values of z for which the transform will converge. Since z will need to be large, as we just discussed, the transform form will converge only for values of z greater than some value r. We call the values of z greater than r the region of convergence. For example, let's say we took the z-transform of this sequence. Then the transform would converge only if the absolute value of z was greater than 2. This would happen because the denominator would grow faster than the denominator, the numerator. In fact, you can actually find the exact z-transform of all exponential sequences. We compute this z-transform by using our knowledge of the sum of an infinite geometric series. This equation tells us that for exponents smaller than 1, the, the sequence will converge to a value. So, from this relationship, we plug in our values and find that the z-transform of an exponential is compact and converges for a limited set of values. If we double check our previous example with 2 to the n, we again find that the ROC of the z-transform is the absolute value is greater than 2. There are two other important signals that are convenient z-transforms, the unit pulse and the unit step. The unit step function is 1 for all values greater than or equal to 0, and 0 for all negative values. The unit step could be expressed as 1 to the n for n greater than 0, or equal to 0, so the z-transform can be solved using our infinite geometric series relationship. The z-transform of the unit pulse is simply 1. If we delay the unit pulse, we simply change the exponent of z. I 
I encourage you to find a good lookup table to find the z-transform of other common sequences. The z-transform is a linear function. Linearity tells us that we can add z-transforms of different sequences together and we can scale z-transforms by constants. If we assume that our sequence y of n was truncated to be zero for negative values, then if we delay y of n by k, we find that the z transform as y is simply multiplied by z to the negative k. Since z to the negative k corresponds to a delay of k samples, we use the convention of z to the negative one to represent a delay of one sample in our filters. If we do not truncate y of n at zero, the delay property is more complicated. Essentially, we still multiply capital Y of z by z to the negative k, but we also have to add in a second z transform of the negatively indexed samples that were previously excluded.